Welcome to the show with personal brand authority, Lita Citroen. Lita is an award-winning executive coach, speaker, and author working with clients in over 30 countries. She helps professionals, entrepreneurs, and business leaders manage the way they're perceived by the people who matter most. From leadership development, executive presence, to strategic communications and social media positioning, Lita's work is thoughtful, motivating, and practical. Get ready for a great program. Here's Lita. Well, hello, hello. Welcome to another great program, Live with Lita. We're streaming to you on LinkedIn and we're streaming on Instagram. So I hope you'll give us a wave in the chat and let us know where you're dialing in from today. We have people all over the world that are joining this broadcast and would love to hear in the chat where you're dialing in from. And remember, we're going to use the chat quite a bit on our LinkedIn Lives and our Live with Lita's because that's where we're going to get your questions, your thoughts, and your comments. So have you ever received hard feedback? I mean, the kind of feedback that like cuts you off at the knees? Think about the last time you got difficult feedback. Was it from a parent? Was it from your spouse, a teacher, an ex, your boss? Hard feedback is not for the faint of heart, right? Hard feedback makes us take a step back, right? And we feel a lot of different things when we get feedback. Maybe we feel that feedback is helpful, right? We see an opportunity to grow and learn from it. We get a, a, a sense of how somebody else sees us. Sometimes we're stunned by the feedback and, and the pain is so deep we can't even process it. And sometimes we feel angry when we get feedback and therefore we want to retaliate. I've shared a lot of feedback with a lot of people in my personal life and my professional life. Some has gone really, really well and some hasn't landed right. I've offered feedback, for instance, and I can tell the person I'm offering feedback with doesn't get what I'm saying. And then I'm stuck because do I dig in deeper? Do I go harder with the feedback? Or do I wait for a different time? So there's a nuance to giving feedback. I've given feedback that lands completely wrong and the person is devastated. I can see the tears welling up in their eyes. I see the veins bulging on the forehead. Um, and I can see that their blood pressure is rising because they're not understanding the point of the feedback and I'm not delivering the feedback right. If you follow me on LinkedIn, you know that earlier this month or actually sometime this spring, I shared feedback I had received about this new book that I'm writing that's coming out in August. And the feedback literally devastated me. I, I was so upset by it. I thought I'd made a mistake being so vulnerable and so real in this book. But then I had to consider some different things and I came to a really healthy place. So if you haven't seen that video, maybe Sabrina, who's helping us run this program, can drop a link to that in the chat or she'll make sure she gets it to you afterwards. Uh, there you go. <laughs> Sabrina's on top of it. Oh, hi, Lisa from Maine, the other side of, uh, of our country. And let's see, Scott from Denver, Shannon from Seattle. Where else are you all dialing in from? Um, I know we've got folks international. We've got a lot of folks here in the U.S. And I love to see where you're dialing in from. But we're talking about feedback. And and I were, it was, we were preparing this. I was thinking back to earlier in my career when somebody really delivered some interesting feedback to me. And I think it's going to be a good dovetail into what we're talking about today. I remember sitting in this managing partner's office and I was a, I was a junior par, uh, professional. I was very young in my career, but I had a career track ahead of me that I was very passionate about. I worked with some very high profile very um, larger than life personalities, let's put it that way. And the feedback I got from the managing director went like this. He said, Lita, I think in your emails, you need to add more please and thank you. Now, email was just getting started back then. And yes, I'm totally dating myself. But his message to me was, I need to be gentler and sweeter and kinder in the things I was requesting from these senior executives. 
And at the moment, I remember thinking, is that a message just for me because of what I'm doing? Or is it a message for me because of the position I hold? And the feedback didn't land right. I actually got really upset and thought he had just turned the clock on women's rights back 50 years. But his message had some validity once I thought about it actually years later in that how we communicate and how he communicated to me could have had a wonderful opportunity to change the, the, the course of my career, but it actually landed wrong. I get feedback from my clients. Sometimes they tell me I'm too positive or I'm too upbeat. I'm okay with that. <laughs> that's who I am as a person. If you know me personally, you know that's how I live my life. And sometimes we get feedback that we're not listening. So feedback is one of these really tricky things. And you all know that I'm so focused on influence and helping people build their brand and manage their reputation. So how we absorb feedback into our company culture, into our professional life is why we're here today, because we're going to talk about being curious, being open-minded, being a good communicator when you give feedback, as well as when you receive it. That's the context of what we're going to unpack. I want to say hi to Sandra in Chicago. Hi to Celeste from Connecticut. Uh, so far, all US-based. Let's see who else is joining us. I'm going to go ahead and introduce my very special guest. Um, she's got an amazing story to share, and I know you're all going to love to hear from her. Since Evelyn was young, she has cared about people. And we might say, I care about people, but this woman walks the talk and you're going to hear when, as soon as she starts speaking, you're going to hear the passion, the authenticity, the love she has for people. She, Evelyn Shapiro has dedicated her life to justice, equity, and human skills development. She was raised in Chicago and Detroit uh, and has a family and a community deep heritage in civil rights and social justice. She nurtured her passion for helping people by leading a multi-state department combating wage theft in construction and producing substantial legal victories and policy reforms on behalf of the people she believes in. She went on to make history, actually, as the first female principal officer in one of the largest construction unions in the United States. That's pretty Evelyn's tenure was proudly distinguished by her successes towards improving workers' wages and benefits, establishing equitable personnel policies, and promoting equity in team environments. She also has lived and practiced a culture, which we're going to hear about, of feedback in the organizations she has led. Today, Evelyn leads Curiosity Growth Labs, which advocates for equity in work place structures and is prominent in the healthy conflict as a means of organizational growth. So she actually goes into companies and helps them create these systems where there is a little bit of conflict because that's where the feedback comes through and that's where the growth happens. She helps individuals and organizations bring strategy, accountability, curiosity, and fun to mission-driven goals. So with that, please help me welcome Evelyn Shapira up to the stage. Hi, Lita. Hi, Evelyn. How are you? I'm doing well. Great. Well, that was quite an introduction. Um, and I know I only read probably a tenth of your bio because you have a lot, um, a lot that you've done. You know, here's here's the first question I'd like to kick off with. In my book, this the book, The New Rules of Influence, available now for pre-order. I focus on helping people figure out what their voice is find their sense of purpose and passion and lead their career in a way that serves others, that's inclusive, that's meaningful, and that has purpose. How has that, how has your path aligned to that vision? Oh gosh. Um, it's, it's been everything I've done my whole life. And uh, I'm not sure if that's because of the family I grew up in and that was kind of a family business or if that's how I was kind of trained and brought up to see the world. Uh, but it's always what has felt right and felt like what I wanted to do and what I love. You, you told me in, in our pre-meeting that you had spent some time um, in South America doing service work. Tell us a little bit about that and why 
why do that? Why, why was that a calling for you? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so it was it was Central America. It okay. was um, it was Nicaragua and El Salvador. Um, and you know, I was a young person. I was uh, in college and also after college in my early twenties. And it was really just being drawn to the mission of these organizations. I I don't. In some ways, I get drawn to work, but in some ways. I really centrally get drawn to the people in the mission. And if that's what feels like a good fit, that's what feels right. Uh, in Central America, they were having elections at the time, presidential elections in El Salvador, and they were calling for international election observers. And so I went down with a delegation of observers to ensure that the elections were fair and and wow. uh, and just and that you know the people were truly represented. Uh, in Nicaragua, I worked closely with a solidarity organization in a medical clinic and uh, really just got to know the people to see what what they wanted to center in their work. Did that kind of um, start your passion for immigrant rights and the rights of migrant workers and all of those things that I know you have focused on? That's a great question. I think, you know, I I also, I was really grateful to start early working with the Farm Workers Union out of Oregon, Pecun, uh, for any Pecunistas out there. Um, and so it, what was interesting was going to Central America and seeing some of the living and working conditions and then going to the fields in the United States, in Oregon and Washington and seeing the living and working conditions. And it was really, uh, it was kind of a trip to see just this, uh, this total degradation of, of conditions in our country that, that we're really not exposed to on a daily basis. And that further translated into construction later when I started really getting involved in, in wage theft enforcement and investigating unsafe conditions on job sites. And you mentioned you got into the construction space. Um, you're a journeyman, right? As a, as a, what is the correct terminology? A master carpenter, or tell it, me about that. Yeah, it's a little controversial these days. There's, there's not too many women overall in construction, so uh, it's, it's either journeyman carpenter or journey level carpenter. Journey level, I guess that would be more accurate, wouldn't it? <laughs> Perfect, and. And in the course of growing to being, you know, the prominent role that you had, um, the first female principal officer um, in that organization, you know, you've you've walked a lot of different situations. Are there some that come to mind that may have been adverse or may have been positive where you talk about this idea that you just couldn't walk by when you saw something that didn't feel right to you? Yeah, thank you for asking that. You know, I think I've I've seen that in my career uh, constantly because in the workplace we constantly see things that seem off, or uh, you know, you notice a subtext, or you're you're noticing something that's going on that you want to address, and so it's really common to see stuff stuff in the workplace. Um, but I even think about it on a daily basis. I was really raised to uh, to not walk by a situation in on the street. Um, so, you know, gosh, there will be situations when there's an accident. Uh, I've come up on accidents where somebody's, you know, in a really bad spot and reaching out of their their car for help, and everybody's kind of watching. And I go over and say, hey, I'm Evelyn, how can I help, you know? And I think that same approach of, hey, how can I help is something that we can use every day in our, uh, our personal lives and especially at work because uh, we're, we're all humans. We're all trying to do our best with human skills. And when we take the humanity out of it, then we don't do as well. And so a lot of it is just about trying to reintroduce that humanity. I love that you say that because I'm thinking back to your LinkedIn profile, which I encourage people to connect with Evelyn. Um, and in your LinkedIn description, you say, I believe in people. Mm -hmm. And that really ties to the humanity that you're talking about, right? It's seeing people however, wherever they are, which is something I talk about in my book that mm -hmm really, I mean, it, it makes people feel heard and visible and, and important. And, and what can that do 
to raising people's confidence and raising their own voice, which is something you're talking about. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so we're talking today a lot about feedback because that was something that you've certainly mastered as you've built organizations, as you've you know helped organizations, and now what you're doing with your own company. What strategies have you found most valuable in fostering a feedback culture within a company? I think the first major step is recognizing how easy it is. It, it feedback is the the one single step that we can take at work, getting comfortable with feedback, removing that stigma, removing that fear, removing the ego. That's a huge part of it because ooh, like you referenced earlier, Alita, I mean, who among us does not struggle with ego? And um that that first belief of just understanding that it is just one of the best initial ways to make a culture change and it happens so quickly so uh first step i think is don't be afraid and uh really really start on that path well and, and i like that you say don't be afraid feedback is both the giver and the receiver right? So the person giving the feedback shouldn't be afraid. I love how you say remove the ego. If you know how to do that, let me know. I've got a lot, a lot of uh, people I'd like to introduce you to, but also remove the ego when you hear the feedback. And I think, you know, when I think back to that incident that I shared where, you know, I got this feedback from someone who was in a position of authority in the organization and I was young in my career, I didn't know what to do with it. I mean, do I need to curtsy and say, please, and thank you? And like, is that what he was telling me? Or, or was he was he offering me something he didn't know how to communicate? One of the things I love to say is perception, which is my world, right? Managing perception. Perception is often wrong. Mm -hmm. And so we hear something, we see something, we believe we know about someone, and therefore we have a perception, a judgment, a bias, a stereotype. And oftentimes that lens is incorrect. It's based on wrong information or incomplete information. And I think that really comes to play here. So you're using ego, but I think it's also our self-imposed biases when we hear feedback and we think, oh, this person's out for my job or this person's trying to keep me down or what's their angle in offering me that feedback and how distracting that is. Can you talk about that for a moment? Yes. Ooh, so much juiciness, so much to explore there. Yeah, those those filters that you're describing, those filters that either come from us personally or come from society or, you know, come from the realities of life. There's there's also a, a level of bias that can be engaged where you're thinking, that person doesn't know how to, you know, evaluate me. What does that person have to give me? Uh, you know, I think that one of the, the true first steps in eliminating some of that ego is something that we're not usually taught, which is self-evaluation. Mm. And we can actively and simply and easily engage self-evaluation in the feedback process at the get-go. And when we do that, we introduce that self-evaluation, you get the chance to say what you think is, is going well. You get the chance to focus on the positive and you also get the chance to encourage yourself towards growth, right? So mm. you can you can kind of self-evaluate. You know, my, my question for you, the first thing I thought when you were talking about that email from your boss, if he had if he had said to you, hey Lita, I want to check in with you about communication. Take a look at your last email, take a look at your last few emails. What can you tell me about this communication? Take a look through it. What do you think went well? And what do you think can can grow? What do you think you, you could grow on to, to move it forward? How would that have landed differently with you? Completely. I mean, I'm an intelligent person. I got a degree. It's signed in pen, right? It's not pencil. Like, I, I know how to think about these things, but you're absolutely right. And that's why I say it took me a couple of years to really process what he had been trying to tell me. So you talk about self-evaluation. One of the things I know about self-awareness is if I ask an audience, you know, how many of you think you're self-aware? Almost every hand goes up. But how many of us are really self-aware? So what is self-evaluation? What does that process look like to you when you say we should do self-evaluation? Oh, it is so simple. It is so, so simple. And this is this is where it really comes into valuing human skills. 
It's, it's really saying, hey, uh, I may not think I'm self-aware or I don't know how to be self-aware, but following just some simple rules or some simple processes can, can get you there, can facilitate you there. So one of the things I'm really proud of is building uh, feedback cultures and organizations where, you know, you sort of come from an insecurity or a competitive environment mm -hmm. and uh, really growing from that into something that is just uh, really excited and hungry to grow feedback. And so uh, typically what will happen after I train staff and train leadership to really engage in the process is that people start getting excited about it. And so what, the, what you'll find that they do is instead of, uh, you know, doing, say, a public speaking gig or giving a presentation or, uh, you know, pitching a project, whatever, whatever the task is, instead of afterwards being nervous about getting feedback, you'll find them practically running over and saying, what feedback do you have? What feedback do you have? And uh, the really key point in that moment is not to jump in and say what you think. Even if you mm. know, even if you have that agreement, even if you say, hey, I am so excited to give you feedback afterwards, please approach me, I'm gonna take notes, I'm ready to go. The really, really key step is to say, you know, let's start with you. What went well? Wow. And that's it. What went well? And inevitably, they're going to start saying, well, this went well. Oh, but this didn't. And then I am just a stickler about being strict. Nope. We're only talking about what went well, what went well right now. Let's focus on that. And uh, really, really driving that and really valuing and making space for their time to focus on, okay, what went well? What do I need to keep doing to be really awesome? So I like how you, whether it's implicit or more subtle, you sort of set this ground rule that we're only going to focus on the positive first. Um, I, I know someone in, in my life now who always starts with the negative. I'm sure the conversation was terrible, but here's, here's what worked. And I just want to go in and excise that one statement because it really changes the tone. And she's giving herself a self-evaluation. Mm -hmm. So one of the things I mentioned in my intro, and I want to pick your brain on this. One of the things I mentioned is sometimes I've given feedback and the person I'm giving feedback to, like you can tell the synapses are not firing. Like mm -hmm. they're nodding and going, uh-huh, got it. And you're going, mm -hmm. but do you? Mm -hmm. How would you, without being confrontational, how mm -hmm. would you dive deeper into that to help them understand what it is that's trying to be communicated to them? Yeah, that's a great question. I think uh, while while I believe that feedback should happen uh, as quickly as possible, so it's fresh for everyone, uh, sometimes people need a minute. And mm. when you when you are in that moment where somebody's feeling resistant or if somebody's not into it, it, it's also okay to read the room and say, "Hey, you know what? I'm really excited to support." your growth and I'm really ex excited to support your development. Uh, you just did a lot of hard work. Why don't we take a breather and come back and kind of let them know that that's what's gonna be happening because sometimes people feel unprepared for it also or realize they need to get into a better space. And it's a little bit of a cue for them to go, okay, I, I, I need to take a minute and also figure, figure out how to be more approachable for this. I love that. And I'm certainly going to put that into practice. And I think everyone listening is probably taking notes. Um, and by the way, make sure you put your questions in the chat because that's where Sabrina's going to pull them forward. Um, and you are getting Celeste says that is so effective, Evelyn. Reflection is a powerful development tool. So you're getting a lot of positive feedback. Um, so tell me about a time where feedback worked and where maybe it didn't and what we learn from that. Oh, well, just like you said earlier, I mean, every single person has a million um, situations where it's both worked and hasn't worked. Um, let's see. I think um, for feedback working, because I'll start with the positive, I'll start with what, what went well. I, I remember speaking to a staff member who 
really, like you said, veered towards the negative. And this person was really talented and, you know, had a lot to offer, but just was kind of constantly dragging, dragging themselves down. And so I think what, what I really think of is that moment when, uh, when I really pushed them to, to have to focus on, on what's going well and, and really dig into the practicality. You know, they, they wanted to, I think sometimes people get confused and say, well, it's not real if you're just not going into the, the tough stuff. It's, it's not about being afraid of tough conversations. It's about being able to embrace what went well so you can keep doing it and figure out where you need to grow, right? And, and that's it. It's, it's two things. It's up or down. Um, that's, that's it. It's pretty, it's pretty simple. But, you know, this person what really was not hanging on to the value. You know, she felt, sort of felt like, oh, yeah, yeah, we don't need to waste time, you know, on this positive stuff and kept trying to go in. And I just really stuck to my guns and I said, hey, you know what? It's, that's just, um, we're, we're just not going to go there. That's just, there's not room in the conversation at this moment. We absolutely will have time in a little bit, and I'm so excited to give you growth encouragement and growth feedback, and we will do that. So uh, I will give some to you. You will provide some for yourself, and you're going to have ample opportunity to focus on that. I really need to focus with you right now on the practicality of what went well for you. And it, that, that was a real success to see her kind of relax into that and go, okay, not only am I going to have time to, to focus on what, what can go better, but there actually is a practicality to focus on also what, what went well. Well, and I love that you're saying that. It, it's almost like we're going to park that over here. We're not ignoring it. it you know, we're going to come back to it. But for this purpose, this is the conversation we're having. Right. Because in my experience, if somebody feels like the, the stuff that's parked is never going to get to, that might be where they really want to go. But yeah. if, if they feel like it's going to be ignored, then they're going to hold on to it tighter. Do you think do you do you think this is a female issue? Do you think men deal with the same challenges when it comes to feedback? I'm, I'm just curious. Oh, yeah. I mean, so just like any societal stuff, um, absolutely women are impacted disproportionately. Um, different cultures and ethnicities and races are impacted disproportionately because of the way we walk through the world. And we also share a lot of commonalities about this stuff. We, we all struggle with ego. We all struggle with insecurity. We all struggle with, with fear, with lack of success, with not showing up in the right way. Um, and so there, there's so much commonality there. I would say probably the, the biggest, some of the biggest growth moments have been with men that I've worked with who really are trained to show up as nonstop, uh, you know, just perfect armor um, and have to always be showing, you know, their absolute, um, you know, unwavering perfection to the world. And, um, you know, that, that can be a little bit of a barrier to get through. And I've, but gosh, like I say, again, feedback is such, feedback culture is such an easy way to cut through that. And I've seen so many men get through that, cut through it, and really come into that eager space of excitement about feedback. And, and I have too. So I, I appreciate you you pointing that, um, pointing towards that, because I think it's all about presentation. It's all about timing, right? Ego plays a big part for everybody. I mean, whether we want to or not, and giving feedback to someone in front of a group of people looks very different than having a one-off conversation where you can be a little bit more candid. One of the things um, I run into sometimes, because you know I do a lot of work with the military, is the concept of a feedback sandwich. Have you heard that term? I have. Okay. So for anyone listening who hasn't heard, um, it's where you really put the good stuff in the middle, but the beginning, right, the beginning of your framing is very positive and a little bit flowery, then you get to the good stuff. Here's the feedback I need to give you. Then you end with something positive and fluffy. That's the, you know, that that's how the sandwich is supposedly built. And I've run into that a lot where 
you know, the military is very direct. <laughs> There's no feedback sandwich. It's this is how it is because on the battlefield, we don't have time for framing it up and putting nice language around it. So there's this disconnect with wanting to not come across callous and abrupt, but also providing mm -hmm. feedback that isn't too fluffy. How, how would you navigate that if you were in an organization or maybe somebody listening is leading a team and they're trying to give feedback, knowing that you don't want to have a military style because it's not the right context. And if you're offering a feedback sandwich, uh, you know, they make it hung up on the bread a little more than they should. What are some mm -hmm. thoughts you have about that? I don't love the sandwich. I don't either. <laughs> yeah, for for me, I mean, you said the word fluff. Uh, I think the, the word fluff is really apt. Uh, what I find when we do that, that fluff sandwich at the end, that fluff bread at the end of, but you're doing a really good job. Right. You know, it's sort of like you start off positive, you start off really praising, and what you're actually there to talk about is the feedback, um, you know, the growth feedback, I call it. Mm -hmm. uh, but then you sort of, I think that closing fluff, that closing uh, bread piece comes off as insincere. I think mm. it, you know, hey, but you're doing a really good job. It's it, it it seems to me both insincere and it also takes away from the message. It's like we, um, you know, we're, I'm here to tell you two things. I'm here to tell you things that are going great that I want you to keep doing. And I'm, I'm here to talk to you about things that, that can go better. And that's it. And I think the gravity uh, and the sincerity of that landing on its own and letting it just stand on its own is the way I approach things because that that final piece of fluff can, it just, it just attracts from the message, I think. It does. It feels nice though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't know. I mean, for, I think, in my experience, when when I have experienced that, um, both on the receiving end of the sandwich and also, you know, when I've kind of tried that out on the giving, it it doesn't seem to me like as strong of a formula uh, because that last piece it it almost seems to kind of negate the sincerity right. that you're really working towards. And yeah. you know, you can have a really direct conversation and be kind. Uh, you know, and, and I'm not saying nice, I'm saying kind. We can have, we can be really direct. I can share some difficult things with you. I can listen to some difficult things from, from, from you as well and, and be kind about it and not have to worry about fluffing up your feelings and making you feel better at the end. When you have those difficult conversations where, like you said, maybe there's some positive we want to talk about, but really the point of the meeting is to talk about something that needs to be changed or corrected, and you leave a meeting like that, is there follow-up that's expected or that's beneficial? What would that look like? So that's the third step that comes after feedback, and um, that's, that's kind of the step that uh, is either takes place at that same conversation or specifically as a follow-up or series of follow-ups. And that third piece is development. Mm. Uh, because with development, you want to be able to provide or ensure support to keep doing things well and to improve things that are not going as well to really encourage that growth. So how would you track that? Is there some type of metric? Is that com is that part of the conversation when you're offering somebody feedback that you say, this is what I'm going to be watching for? Or is it sort of understood? Yeah, no, it's important for it to be clear. Um, you know, you don't want to enter an environment where people are feeling watched. Yeah. Uh, it's not, you know, this is, this is not a conversation about you're on probation. This is a conversation on, hey, I believe in you. And this this can go better and let's find the resources together and, and even that self-reflection that comes into play in the development like i say the development uh piece is kind of it, it's it's its own piece on its own it's its own you know step that's uh that that has its own systems but that self-reflection hey what can help you get there mm -hmm. what can help you maintain what's going well what can help you strengthen these strengths and what can help you also improve this 
And so also allowing them to uh, step into that role because chances are they may have seen, they may have seen some programming, some training, maybe they need a mentor, maybe they need, you know, a coworker to, to buddy up with. All, there's so many strategies that can be employed. And when it comes to systems, when it comes to tracking, again, that really depends on the organization. There's, uh, there's certainly tools that I use uh, and they you know, can work for smaller organizations or larger ones, uh, but a lot of that really depends on the culture of your organization and, and what's gonna work best. And so a lot of times with a client, that's part of the work we do is say, okay, how is this gonna fit into your follow-up? How is this gonna fit into a cadence that is gonna work and that is gonna really support this development? Well, and you certainly have experience leading very large organizations and initiatives. When you go into a client, uh, let's say they want to build a healthier feedback focused outcome based environment. Are you working at the top level and the bottom level or everything in between? Like how extensive does creating a culture like this have to have to get for it to work? Or do you just plant a few seeds and it grows from there? Yeah. So yes and yes and yes. <laughs> It, it depends. Uh, some of it depends on what the organization has capacity for. If they, um, you know, a lot of times people try to throw training at a problem. And so they think, oh, gosh, we have this problem. And so we just need to get this training on feedback culture and then we'll be done and we'll be fixed and all of our problems be solved. Unlikely. If, if you're at the point where you're having a cultural issue in your organization that you're concerned about, it's unlikely that throwing a workshop at something is going to get you there. Uh, it may make you feel better. It may be something great that you can report to the higher ups that you, you know, made an effort at. But in the long run, it's it's probably not going to, you know, be comprehensive enough. Um, but it also, you know, it it depends on on the abilities and capacity of the organization. Uh, I've certainly done work just with leaders uh, where you're doing thought partnering and examining either communication practices or, you know, internal structures to figure out, you know, what they can do. Uh, I've also been in situations where I'm interviewing, you know, all of the staff and just saying, hey, how's it going? How does it, how does it feel? What's, what's getting in your way? How, you know, what's, what are, what are the challenges? And, you know, that bigger investment on organization part can be scary for them because it can be scary to have somebody else kind of you know, poking around and, you know, letting letting somebody else in to see some of the difficulties you might be having. But um, that's that's just another level of it. And uh, all of it's going to help. Even that throwaway, I call it a throwaway workshop. It's not a throwaway. Even that one workshop will help. Um, and, you know, be, because it's something that's, it, it, it is something you can impact so, so easily. If, if you just make even one simple step, it's going to help. Love that. And I know we're going to take questions in a moment. So everybody get your questions ready. Start putting those in the chat so Sabrina can start capturing those. So how does this all come together for you? You, you have this focus on social justice and human rights and, and, and passion for representing people who may be marginalized or, or underrepresented. And now you've got a consulting firm that focuses on creating healthier organizations. How, how do those connect for you? It, it's all the same to me. It's, it's all about voices being heard or not being heard. And uh, particularly in, you know, social justice work or service work or, you know, work that we're doing in our communities that we want to be helping with. If if our internal stuff isn't going well, uh, that's going to really impact our mission-driven work. And so it's it's partially about really supporting those, those missions and being able to support good work to happen. But it's also just at its core the same thing to me. When you have a marginalized voice in society and in systems who... Uh, are not listened to or quieted down or are, are, are pushed out, that that experience at work uh, can 
can have the same effect and be kind of that same route. And so in engaging in, in, in all of those systems, understanding them, using a strong lens of, of really reading what's happening in the room, and also just saying, hey, human skills matter, and I believe people can do this is, is kind of just at the base of it. I love that. And, and humans matter, right? <laughs> um, I can't wait for you to have my book. You're going to absolutely love it. Um, so what would you say to someone starting their career in the in, in social change or, or organizational change or social justice, human rights advocacy. Like if, if somebody's listening to this going, wow, here's somebody who has walked this path and has done the hard stuff. What would you say to that person today? If, if they're ready to take the first step and they're not quite sure how to do it. Mm, yeah. I would say focus on what you love doing. Mm. Focus, uh, think back to times in your childhood Think back to times in your life when you felt free, when you have felt energized and excited and, and start there. Mm. And once you get there and you think you have a direction, pay attention to what's going on around you. Uh, I've certainly done amazing work that I'm really proud of in environments that were not, uh, you know, we're not very healthy and uh, we're not very, I would say, supportive of one another. Uh, I've also done work uh, that I was really proud of around amazing supportive environments. And so, you know, part of it is paying attention to both. Really get in there and follow your interests, but also follow, pay attention to the environment too. Love that. Love that. Well, I want to make sure if we have any questions that people enter those in the chat. Um, you're getting a lot of positive uh Celeste talks about the, you know, how powerful reflection is as a, as a development tool. Uh, Lisa loves your marination time. I actually love that too. Although I do think of um, marinating meat and now I'm thinking of sandwiches. So um, it must be lunchtime here. <laughs> so no, 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 sandwiches. <laughs> no, but really good bread. Um, Sabrina's asking, could you share a technique or exercise that people can use to practice and improve their feedback skills, both giving and receiving? Thanks for that, Sabrina. Oh, that is such a good question. Yes. So uh, when whenever you are going into a situation that you are a little bit nervous about, or you are excited about having any kind of heightened emotion, uh, pick out at least one person and des designate them as your feedback buddy. And tell them in advance, hey, I really uh, appreciate you and I value your observation and I would appreciate you watching me. And I want you to give me feedback about what went really well and what was really positive and also uh, feedback for growth, you know, what I can do better. So please, please really watch me. I'm going to come up to you afterwards. I'm gonna be asking you and I'm really excited to hear what you have to say. That little trick of just getting that, that practice going, it starts forming an expectation of feedback culture. It start, that is that is one little thing. I mean, I, I will literally see people racing across the room saying, okay, how did I do? How did I do? You know, and you start engaging that whole process. And if they're really on top of it, the other person will remember to push them towards self-reflection first. But that, that little practice of just um, setting somebody up and empowering them. A lot of times we don't give feedback because we're afraid of hurting feelings. We're afraid we're not going to, it's not going to be welcome. It's not appropriate, maybe positionally. I don't feel like I know enough to be able to give you feedback. But when you say, hey, I, I'm asking you, I'm empowering you to help me, help me grow and be better. That is a great place to start. Love that. Get a feedback buddy. I like that term. Um, Celeste has a question for you. You mentioned growth feedback. What are your thoughts on positive feedback? Is there such a thing as too much? Never for me. You can always <laughs> give me positive feedback. Great question from Celeste. Thank you, Celeste. Yeah. So, um, you know, I think of, 
I, I think of two categories. I think of positive feedback and I think of growth feedback. Mm -hmm. So um, positive is what's going well. Growth is what can be improved. What can we do better next time? And uh, when it comes to positive, I would say that <laughs> it's rare that we can give too much because most of us don't. Just, just culturally in the world, we tend to focus on what's not going well. And so um, I would say the, the time for positive feedback when it's too much is usually because it's too general. It's mm -hmm. usually, hey, great job out there. Hey, you're, you're doing great. Good, good job, everyone. Let's get, go team, you know, or you know what? Gosh, you're just, you're, you're, you're on top of it. You nicely done. Something simple like that can be well-placed and can be, you know, in the moment can be like, oh, high five. You know, we, we absolutely want that. But actual really specific positive feedback that focuses on actions, that focuses on what occurred, you know, how it occurred, how it was delivered, actually really detailed and specific positive feedback. Uh, I would love to see the day when any environment in this world has too much of that because I have not seen it. Uh, that, that is the kind of fe positive feedback that we can actually use in a practical way. I absolutely love that. Uh, one of my sons actually about years ago challenged me. I would say, oh, I'm so proud of you. You're so awesome. And he's like, for what? And I was like, what do you mean for what? And mm -hmm. I learned, you know, because that's what he needed. He didn't want an attaboy. He wanted to know what was I most proud of him for? What was he doing that I was most pleased with? Because to your point, that told him what he should repeat to be in my favor, right? So I think the more specific we can be instead of, oh, you did a great job, it's, I really like how you opened. I, I like the thoughtfulness with which you responded to questions. I, you know, being specific tells somebody what we want to see more of, which is growth feedback. So I agree. We'll, we'll, we'll hope that that day comes in our lifetime. <laughs> Kids and spouses and friends are both great training grounds and also really important with relationship building and connection with people we love. So this is not just workplace stuff. This is this is life stuff. Well, I don't see any questions. I know Sabrina has dropped in the chat where you can learn more about Evelyn. She has a beautiful website. You can go check out what she's up to. Connect with her on LinkedIn. Um, any last thoughts, Evelyn, before we let everybody go back to their to their day? Gosh, uh, I just I appreciate this discussion so much. I am so excited to read your book. I love that you have focused in this book on people who who do service uh, and who influence the world in that way. And I think that's such a powerful approach. So I'm excited about that. And I appreciate the opportunity to talk about uh, my my love language feedback. So thank you. I love that. So there's a sixth love language. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Um, I admire your career to date. I'm excited to see where your path goes. And I know that you're going to make this world a better place because you're in it. And thank you so much for sharing some of your wisdom with us today. Be sure to catch my next uh, LinkedIn Live where we're going to have a very interesting guest who went from digital media into finding purpose in a very different way. So be sure to tune in, follow me on LinkedIn, follow me on Instagram, you'll get notified. Uh, subscribe to my newsletter so you can find out all about, you know, some upcoming programs we have and pre-order now if you're interested in the new rules of influence available on Amazon. Thank you so much, Evelyn, and to everybody watching wherever you are in the world, be safe, be healthy, and we'll see you again soon. Thank you. Take care.